Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Lyle, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the most basic things that you can do in AquaChem, which is import data. In AquaChem, the database structure is much more structured than something like Excel. In AquaChem, you've got discrete tables. So, for example, the station list is a table. On each table, you've got individual records are called. So each one of these rows is a record. And for each one of these records, they've all got the same number of fields. That's these columns. Some of these fields have rules, some of them don't. So for example, this location field is not mandatory. And in this example, I've left it blank. Some of these fields might be drop downs. This would be up to the user to, to set up. And some of these fields are mandatory. So like the station name, it cannot be left blank. So that's legal. AquaChem won't let me do that. In addition, AquaChem is something called a relational database. So these tables can have relationships with other tables. A good example is that on the sample list, each one of these samples, even though there's not a field for it, is associated with a station. So like this MW104 sample is associated with the MW1 station. Additionally, tables can have very complex relationships. So the sample results pane right here, this is actually its own table. So this is a table that's associated with a given sample. The sample results pane stores different values and things on the table like parameters and units are actually stored in different tables. So these are taken off of other tables. These are called foreign keys. Again, if you want to learn about relational databases, feel free to look this up on your own. But anyways, all of this to say that AquaChem databases are much more structured than something like an Excel spreadsheet. The nice thing about the structure is that it leads to an implicit level of quality control. And in addition to that, it enables things like querying. So it makes it possible to query, say, every sample where the potassium result was more than 10 milligrams per liter. The fact that our database is so structured allows for us to do this. But as a consequence, it makes importing data into the database take a few extra steps. So before I jump off and start importing data, I want to point out that AquaChem actually ships with a tutorial on importing data. To find that, you'd go to Help, Contents, and then under Quick Start Tutorials, you want Creating a New Project and Importing Data. And specifically, you'll need to work to the Importing Data section. Here, you'll see that the tutorial includes some example data for you to import. And if we open this up, you can see that you've got this uh, several samples for you to import. This might be useful for you if you're interested in a template that you can model your own data off of. There's also a similar file for station data. But anyways, I'll go back to AquaChem. And now I can start importing data. But actually, before I start importing data, I should probably take a look at the data first. So this example that I just showed you had samples as rows. So here we've got a sample name, the station that it's associated with, which as you recall, I mentioned was mandatory. Uh, sample date, analysis date, so this is all sample metadata. And after the metadata, we've got the actual results for each individual parameter. So we've got the results for the pH and the calcium and so on. There's also this, uh, this units row, which is quite important. But this is only one way that you can import data. AquaChem also allows you to import data where the sample results are in rows. So for an example of that, we'll look at this. So this is the data that we'll actually import. We've got the well ID, so this is the station name. We've got the sample ID, and each row here is an individual parameter result. So here for this specific sample, we've got the results for ammonia. And then for the same sample, we've got the results for bromide and calcium and chloride and so on. And eventually we've got results for different samples. Another thing that I wanna note here is that I've actually done a little bit of pre-processing. I haven't fully pre-processed this, but I've still made sure that I'm able to bring this into AquaChem at all. In general, the more pre-processing of the data that you do outside of AquaChem, generally the easier it is to bring it into AquaChem. So one thing to notice here, we don't have any extra rows or columns. So notice how we've just got one header row and then our results. And then if I scroll to the bottom, that's it. 
that's all we have is the results. There's no extra columns. Uh, we, we don't have things in here like, you know, row 1,000 is another row of, uh, of header data and so on. It's just one header and all of our data. There's some more pre-processing that I could have done here, but I'll talk about that during the import and I'll just go back to AquaCam. And now that we're back in the software and I've gotten all that out of the way, we can start import. So to import data, you go to modules, import data, or you can just select the icon right off of the uh, module toolbar, select it. I'm importing samples, so I'll keep it on samples and I'll hit OK. And now I need to specify the import file name, so I'll find the uh, spreadsheet. Hit open. As I mentioned, I already pre-formatted the spreadsheet so that I wouldn't need to do it in the software. So as we can see, we've got one analyzed value per row. The header row is row one, which is the default, and we're starting to import from row two. I'll hit next. And we're now at the mapping step. In the mapping step, we take the columns in our spreadsheet and map them to the fields in the AquaChem database. For example, every sample has a name, so we'll pick which column in our spreadsheet represents the sample name. Uh, same thing with the station. These two are mandatory, as you can see, because they're highlighted green. But if we've got other metadata, such as the sample date, we can also map that here as well. For samples, they also have some other special things that need to get mapped. So we need to map the units. That's under the source unit column. And for this data, it's just called unit. So I'll just select that right now. And we also need to map the sample analysis table. So if you recall, the sample analysis table and the sample table are two different things. The sample table holds the metadata about the sample, whereas the sample analysis or the sample results pane actually holds the measured results. So I'll first map the sample table. And if I go back to my spreadsheet, the name is this EPA sample ID column, while the station name is the well ID. We also have a date collected column, so I'll map that as well. So for name, EPA sample ID. And to map this, I'm just clicking on the drop down menu under each row, the station, that's the well ID and sample date is date collected. So the EPA sample ID and the well ID are both strings, but the date collected is in the date time format. So I need to say what format uh, it is. So I've, I've got to select it and it's this month, day, year. And now I'll map the sample analysis table. So I'll just click that. And I can see that the two ones that I need to map are the parameter ID, and the sample ID. And I'll go back and check very quickly. So the sample ID is still the EPA sample ID and the parameter name for the parameter ID is called analyte name in the spreadsheet. So parameter ID, go to analyte name, sample ID, it's the EPA sample ID. We also want to bring in the actual measured results. So for value, I believe it's result. And for comment, we've got a description here. Although actually now that I think about it, I think this comment went with the samples. So I'll put this to none and for samples, the comment pick description here. So now I'll select next to move on to the parameter step. But before I can do that, AquaCam has a couple notices for me. For one thing, there were a bunch of stations in this data that aren't in the project yet. Thankfully, AquaChem just allows you to automatically add these stations to the project. And I've got the ability to see which stations will get added by selecting C data. And it's also telling me that I've got some duplicate samples in my data. Here, I basically just acknowledge that AquaChem will only keep the last duplicate value. And I've got the option to see what the duplicates are by selecting C data here. And as you can see, we've got several results here. We've got the same sample ID. which takes us to the mapping step. In the mapping step, we'll map the parameters found in the imported spreadsheet to database or project parameters. Some of these we can map automatically. AquaChem comes with a large master chemical list that is a large chemical database, and we might be able to add some of these from that. So to do that, 
and press this little molecule with a plus button. Hit find, and we're able to get bromide. So we'll import that. It's been added to the project database. We'll hit close, and it's been mapped. For some of these other ones, these already exist as parameters in the database. For example, calcium is already in the project database. If I click on the black next to it and filter for CA, you see that we already have it. I'll hit OK. And I'll do that for the remaining parameters that are already in the project database. OK, so now that's done. I should point out that if the names of these parameters exactly match the short name of a project parameter, these would have gotten mapped automatically, but they didn't, so they weren't. For these remaining parameters, we can see that we've got four that were neither in the master chemical list uh, nor in the project database. So for these, we can create uh, stub parameters. So to do that, just press this Create Stubs button, and it will add a chemical to the database with these names, and you can go back later and put in the chemical parameters for it, so things like you know valency and uh, unit and so on. For now, I'll hit next, and I'll move on to unit mapping. Here, the units exactly match the units in the database, so these were mapped automatically. So I'll just hit next, and now I'm just at the preview step. In the sample table up here, we can see which samples will get added. You can also go to the sample analysis table and see every single sample that will get added. If I wanted to, I could save my mapping settings here. So if I'm going to be doing this import many times, I could give this a name and hit save and then use the mappings later. For now, I'll just hit import. And AquaChem tells me that it was able to add 182 samples and 2100 sample analyses. And now I'll hit finish. So we can see on the sample list, it's automatically refreshed, and we have all of our different samples. Additionally, we can see on the station list, AquaChem has added quite a few stations. Obviously, the only data that it had available for it was just the names. So I would somehow need to update all the other uh, data for this. But anyways, that's everything that I wanted to show in this demo. Thanks, and I hope you learned something.